kind of exploring and trying to evolve with this stuff, put your thinking hat on, then you're being complacent. You're going to end up with the same type of things as everybody else. I say that it's bad, but just usually par. Never really strive to have the desire to just be par. All right, Ryan, whose truck are we in? So we're in a customer of Michael Holmes. I tuned a Global B 19 plus truck for Jason a couple weeks ago, supercharged. This was a Whipple, and uh, this truck is an exact mirror image of that setup. But this is a 23 model truck, GMC Denali. Did you say Denali? Denali. 23 model truck, 6.2, 10 speed. The TCM's not unlocked. We're doing uh, just ECM tune only. And it is an absolute bone stock truck with only a Whipple, 4.375 pulley. So it should make about seven, seven and a half pounds of boost somewhere around there. I've already got a baseline tune in there. I should have a pretty close starting point very clear that he didn't really want it to be super aggressive not building a race truck for sure and we'll go up. kind of make some rips on this thing before we put it on the dyno i see where we're at these trucks are super nice is this truck lowered it is i feel like i'm still sitting up so high you are <laughs> what kid he's got on i didn't get to talk with him a whole lot about the truck this morning obviously we've only done like a couple of these trucks now we held out on the 19 plus truck tuning for a while because uh, initially there just wasn't a ton of support in HP tuners for it. When we first looked into them with the release of the C8 stuff, we wanted to jump in, take that opportunity. Actually, the C8s and these 19 newer trucks are extremely similar in tuning. Green one, you've, you've pretty much essentially conquered the other. Yeah, we haven't done just huge volumes of, of these, but the ones we've done so far, I'm really liking. Much bait. Yeah, Butch Payton's, Jason's truck a few weeks ago, this truck, Desmond C8. There's been a couple more 19 plus trucks that I've tuned, one with a LAT factory replacement cam, and but they've gone extremely well. I mean, I haven't, just haven't had any issues. Knock on wood with the neural network tuning, which, you know, was believed to be almost like wizardry, witchcraft, possible to tune and all that stuff but it actually works works out pretty well with the neural network trainer that's in hp tuners and going through that whole process so airflow modeling standpoint it's very critical so the, the neural network tool has been good in hp tuners to get the airflow model really dialed in with these this truck a couple weeks ago and this truck that i'm doing now are the first ones i've done that were power adders i didn't run into any issues with the neural network on the last truck but the axis values for like that airflow model don't really account for boost ranges or high rpm ranges from the factory because they're not factory supercharged i had a guy send me a tune for a ct5 or something i don't know um, that had the factory neural network tables that went up beyond into boost ranges I'm not even using that on this truck i'm trying something totally different because why not? I found in the neural network settings down through there, there's min and max values for those axis values. This one I raised it to where it would read to a 2.0 pressure ratio, which is basically two times atmosphere. It's actually map KPA divided by pressure, or divided by barely pressure ratio. Anyways. Just a little math. Yeah, it's, it's basically 14 pounds of boost. Yeah. 14 <laughs> pounds of some change. It will read up to that point. Uh, or, or account for up to that on the axis, on the neural network table now. And I stretched the RPM range out to 6,500 RPMs. We're not going to go there with stock transmission shift points. I'll probably go close to that on the dyno uh, because I'll be in manual shift mode and I can take the RPM out there. That's the only differences between this truck and the, the last truck I did. I'm going to try these axis values and kind of see if it pisses anything off, to be honest with you. Or if it uh, provides us a little cleaner airflow model, you know, so. I don't know what these 
trucks run bone stock. We haven't even finished this thing up on the dyno yet. I just kind of wanted to come out here and do a little baseline testing. and opening the throttle down low uh, like this orange line is my pedal my accelerator pedal what I did the white line is what the actual throttle on the truck did so it was definitely slow opening the throttle I'm gonna have to work on that you know the fuel side of things looks pretty good the first the one two shift was short which I can't do anything it shifted at 4400 rpms on the one two shift 5600 two three 5600 three four 5300 on the 4 5 shift. Um, I mean, everything else data wise looks looks pretty good. 7, about what I thought, about 7.2, right around 7, 7.5 seven pounds of boost. So, now to make some little small changes. So, what changes are you thinking? I'm going to bump up the uh, some of the driver demand settings a little bit. See if that helps our pedal response. It also could be some limitation on the, from the transmission side of things. A predicted torque source is transmission. So we really probably to get all this as clean as I'd really like to get it, which for what he's using it for, it's never really gonna be an issue. I would like to be able to tune trans. Our VE airflow and MAF airflow are <clears throat> separate so I'm going to try to get that lined up and make sure our fuel stays in line pretty close to right around the 4,000 rpm range um, so I'm going to mess with the neural network trainer for that it's really conservative on ignition timing it's only like 12 and a half degrees so. um, I don't think so. I'm going to have another table that we'll have copied over that's definitely gonna we're gonna definitely have to rerun that because it's gonna be it's gonna be better but wide open throttle our cam center line our cam position is six nine four the first two neural network tables are gonna have to be adjusted what does that mean well, I'll show you um, there's a neural network table for intake cam at 105, which is fully advanced position. Then when you start using the VVT, retarding the cam, it changes, you know, this is 115, so this is 10 degrees retarded. And it runs in between zero and eight or nine on the VVT at wide open throttle area. So I'm gonna be in between these two tables. I'm basically gonna change these two tables at uh, these boost ranges which is gonna be basically 140 kPa and up, which is gonna be like 1.4 pressure ratio range. So uh, like in this area, I'm gonna, and I'll interpolate that down to like 1.23. I'm only gonna change it uh, at the affected RPM. Quick math here, 510 grams divided by 410 grams is a 24% difference in fueling, that's it. 5500 rpm so 5500 and up we're going to take like 22 percent out across the board now 
and not as much error, but I'm gonna have to make some more changes, it appears. <laughs> Two millivolts looks. There's not a wide band in the truck. Okay, so. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Also, give us a follow on our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, we appreciate you guys, and we'll see you again next time. This was a very quick ride to Mexico. Yeah, it was. This is, actually, we're not even in a truck. This is computer <laughs> generated, this is CGI. Thank you, AI. Yes, the built office. to simulate like we're still in the Little Rock metro area, even though we're really not. We're really, 